Hi guys, it's Matt here from Axon UK and in this video we are going to be looking at how to UV map a modelled object. In later videos we are going to be looking at texturing this and then exporting its sculpt data ready to be used in a games engine. So one of the things that you need to do to start with is do a good UV map otherwise you will find that your sculpt data will not translate across properly into a games engine. Okay, so we've got our sculpt data here on this object that I've already created my nice little dragon and it's only going to be sort of like a, a basic ornament. So he's, he's not going to move or talk or anything. He's designed to be just like a, a little ornament that you would find maybe in a park or something like that or maybe just a, a small ornament that you would find on a table. So if we have a look, I'm going to need to move my layout to my um, body paint UV edit layout. And there we go, you can see that it all changes a little bit. We've got our objects down here and we have our texture up here. Now if I select my object, you will see that we don't actually have anything as yet. It doesn't have any UV tag created. And the UV that it will create will be based on its original base layer, uh, which means it will take all of the sculpt detail away and I'll be dealing with the polygons underneath, which is really useful for sort of quick texturing and being able to see if you need to rig or animate anything in any way, shape or form. But this is not gonna be one of those times. This is just going to be a simple object. So we need to make sure that our object is selected and we've got a couple of different ways of getting the projection to start with. Okay, so we've got a whole load of um, options over here and what we need to do is create ourselves some UVs. Now this did have some UVs because I was working on them um, but I've deleted them so I'm just going to need to recreate them so we can just do some UV stuff and set from what we're looking at and that gives us a basic um, sort of projection of our UVs of this which is in no way useful whatsoever and we can have a look at these and see what we can do to change them so let's have a nose here okay there we go need to make sure I'm on the right tool so if you want to be editing UVs you do need to make sure that you are on the UV polygon edit or the UV points edit mode these ones will not serve you because your options will disappear so at the moment, it's done a sort of spherical projection, which is what it's given us here. And you've got some objects, uh, some different modes that you can work on. Frontal does exactly, it looks at where we are and projects it that way. Cylindrical guesses that it's cylindrical with a top and a bottom. Spherical tries to do something else. Flat from one particular angle, but that's all of the polygons through. Cubic is kind of useful, but because it does everything from the four, uh, from sorry, from the six different sides, but it overwrites all of them. I'm going to come back to cubic two in a minute. Um, you've got box, which is okay, but it stretches stuff. Shrink, which, uh, yeah, it sort of makes an interesting mess of that. It doesn't really seem to help me. The one I find the most useful is cubic two. Okay, because it's basically cubic one but spread out. Okay, and that gives us nice little access to our. UV map here in a relatively useful format that I can edit with and play in order to get my UVs to work properly within a sculpt. Okay, so when it comes to UV mapping, it is going to take a little bit of time. So, what I'm going to have to do with bits of this is I'm going to explain some of the stuff as I go, but largely I'm going to nip through me producing this because otherwise you're going to be watching me do this for quite a while. But I'm just going to start with some basic premises. So in order to select sort of islands like this, if you hold down Alt on your keyboard and click, that gives you a whole UV island, which for us here is going to be the entire bottom. Now that's okay, I'm not really worried about this because hopefully we're not going to see much of it whatsoever. So I'm just going to move it over out of my way and to do that I'm going to hold the E key down on my keyboard and that allows me to move. The R key holding down on my keyboard allows me to rotate but you can choose where you rotate from. So if you move your mouse near any particular point you can rotate around there. Um, and you know you can oh, I need to alt click that again there we go so you can rotate around particular points if you want so if you had a, a corner or something that you wanted to align then you can hold down R and you can use that to 
move that around. E will allow you to, as I say, move everything. T will allow you to transform, and that will scale up and down. And very similar to the rotate tool, it will scale up from a point. So if you're happy with the location of that one, or that one, then you can scale it, or you can pick a middle point in order to move stuff around. Now, one of the things that comes with UV mapping is you want to have on your UV tile stuff take up more room if you're going to see more of it. So I'm going to need to make sure that my front and my face is going to take up quite a bit of room because that's where my object is going to largely be viewed from. Um, but the base, for example, is not going to be viewed that much at all. So you could shrink that down and you could move that out of the way. Okay. Now, I am not an expert when it comes to UV mapping for games, so you're going to have to sort of bear with me. I'm sure there might be some people out there who are going to be screaming at me to not do it this way. But I'm just going to give you sort of like some starting points of how to get yourself going. If you want to get into this um, in more detail, do please look up some tutorials and some proper practice when it comes to UV mapping for games. So I'm going to start just by tidying up this um, area a little bit and then moving some stuff out of the way that I don't necessarily need as yet. Um, and you can use your selections and you can use your um, things like that to you know group select stuff that you want out of the way. I'm going to start with the front because I think that's going to be the most useful which gives me this and it might work in polygon mode just so I can see what I've got so with my polygons selected I'm just going to move them down there and I'm going to see what it is that I do and don't have selected and then I'm going to find where my two polygons are that have disappeared there they are and that's what it's chosen to put it as because of the angle it's decided that it's going to be part of that side so I'm just going to move those over here and then what you can do is I have a tendency of checking so I will go to my view deselect and then in points mode I will select the two points that I know uh, or that point rather and I will see which two points it is and I will select that one and then I will just plonk it to where it needs to go you will need to enable snapping which is a really useful thing when it comes to um, sort of moving things about so you want to enable snapping okay and that will give you a much easier um, time when it comes to being able to move stuff about so you can see that that now snaps down so checking that that one okay so that will go there and we will just work our way down with our selection so I can be happier that that island now contains all of that and then I can see what we've got selected in order to make the rest you know so like work its way around let's have a look at what these polygons are didn't do okay so we've got that side where are those three they are over there so what I might do is select those islands and then then move those down further and we can have a look and we can see what is and isn't selected. So those three move over there. Holding down E and then I can snap that to there. And what you can do is again you can select some points. So if you would prefer to sort of map your way out and ensure that it stays. I can hold down E and select that. And then I could hold down rotate and I could move that around. Oh I'm on a 45 degree snap there which is going to be no use for me. So I'm just going to snap that to two. There we go, and then you can T transform and then shrink them down so that they're roughly where they need to be and then I will snap them in so that they match. Now I might be warping some of my um, polygons so that they are not quite exact to this but my plan is later on in one of the videos I'm going to show you that that won't matter for painting within Body Paint 3D. Okay, If you're going to use an external program to do your texture painting then you may need to be a bit more particular with your UV map I am at the moment just going to kind of get my map together so that you can see 
how we need to space it out in order to get our sculpt to work. So this is largely what needs to happen okay it is just a simple case of kind of looking at right the front I'm going to move my way around so I'm going to keep mapping my way I'm going to find out you know where that is so that's another one of the polygons on the inside there isn't it so that goes there we've got some we've got two polygons on the inside I'm just going to deselect that one because I don't need it and that's the back so I shall move that over and what I'm going to do is I'm going to unfurl the majority of the dragon across here so it's though it's been opened up from the back and unwrapped around. So I will keep ploughing on with that and I will catch you in a bit. Right, I've just attached that to the a bit that I think would be better somewhere else. So I'm just going to unstitch that. So using that button, that takes that away. And then it means that I have access to these little points again, which I can, you know, rework. So I shall just keep uh, plodding on with this. So I've got myself a bit confused with this bit, so I'm just going to do a frontal projection on that so that it will map it to at least the angle I'm looking at so I can figure out what is what. And that gives me a new sort of instance to look at so I can see where this is supposed to fit on my character. So trying to decide here where I want the seam to be, whether or not I feel that that one works better as part of that back or whether or not it fits better on the shoulder. And I think actually I'm going to keep it back where the shoulder was. So what I've just done here is selected an area that I kind of want to be its own separate island. So in 3D, I have selected all of the elements that I want to be part of that. And then I have reprojected it. Um, it's going to be backwards because of the way I've done it. So what you can do once you've got it, you can go to UV commands and mirror UV. And now it will be that way around. So it's though I'm looking from the back, which is how I want this island to be. Right, there's a nice little tool with the tail here, so what I want to do is try and flatten that out a bit just to make life easier for me. So using the um, UV commands, if you select a row like that, you can do line up and what it will do is it will line up everything between the first and the last point. And it just means you've got a little bit sort of more control and organisation in your UV and there we go so that's not a bad UV map okay it could probably be a bit cleaner um, but it's not too bad I am however going to do something else to the face which may make this look a lot worse than you would expect where these seams are where these would have to join because that point if I select that point in 3D you can see it's actually those two places so that would in 3D be joined where there is this gap I find that there is a seam sometimes when you put it into a games engine. Um, because I'm using body paint for the texturing a little bit later, what I'm going to do is just adjust 
this map a little bit so it's going to look a lot less clean than you would expect okay there we go so whilst this face does not look like you know sort of like unwrapped dragon anymore and I've, I've tried to make it as seamless as possible now I know that uh, so I imagine game engine people apparently are sort of maybe whinging at me at the moment by looking at this um, but you'll see that with body paint and um, texturing and things like that that it makes texturing really easy if you're just going to use body paint 3d which is what we're going to be doing in another video but that is how I would unwrap my dragon model here and you sort of like got some spaces there you've got bits that aren't going to be you know well utilized or hardly seen at the bottom so it's not taking up much room and then relatively even except of course for the face sort of polygon distribution so you want to try and make sure that you can see a polygon and you haven't got anything that's too squished that isn't small on screen so that polygon there which doesn't take up an awful lot of room doesn't take an awful lot of room on here I could adjust it if I wanted to and then just kind of space it out I'd need to see how the sculpt turns out to see whether or not that that UV map is too small um, and some of those polygons are too cramped in order to get the UV mesh um, sculpt data that I want across in the nicest possible way. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe or check out blog.maxon.co.uk